So in this video, we're going to look into detail into the floating point um, data type. So to do so, let's open a new file and rename it into simply floats. And let's look at a couple of examples. So by now you know that any number you write that has a dot in it can be interpreted as a floating point number or is interpreted as a floating point number. So as before in the video on integers, this way of writing uh, a number is called the literal syntax. So we are basically writing some digits. They must not start with a zero as we saw um, regard with the binary representation in the previous video, this is forbidden. And then the numeric literal needs to have some dot in, uh, in there somewhere at uh, some place. And a dot is what basically uh, makes this numeric literal go into a floating point object uh, when it is parsed by the Python interpreter. So the dot uh, must be there if we need a float. So if I want to write the number 7.0, if I want to save the dot O, I can simply write 7 dot. So sometimes you see people write 7 dot instead of 7.0 um, to save uh, one character of, of typing, uh, but it is the same, of course. Okay, so that's um, floating point numbers. Okay, so what else uh, do you need to know? So how do you get floating point numbers in real life? So let's say if you don't have a floating point number, from some data set, let's say you're reading in some data and you're given either textual data from a CSV file because it is interpreted as text maybe, um, or you get integer numbers um, and you want to convert them into floating point numbers, then what you could do is you could simply use the float constructor. So if you call the float constructor, um, let's say you call it with the integer three, you get back 3.0. And also uh, if you go ahead and you call it with a text object, a string object, let's say 7.12, we get a string. And why is it useful uh, that the float constructor can take an, a string as its argument? Well, we saw that in the previous video when we did so uh, as well for the int constructor. Um, as I said, sometimes there are sources, uh, external data sources that only provide string objects, uh, just like the input function um, that um, asks the user to, get to, to type something into the text box. And whatever the user types in will be uh, will become a string um, in memory. And sometimes we want to ask a user to type in some number, and then we uh, need to go ahead and convert that string into a uh, number, into either an integer or a floating point number, and uh, we can use the constructors to do that. Okay, so that's uh, pretty trivial. So let's look at a couple of other things that are worthwhile to know um, about um, floating point numbers. So the first one being, the so-called scientific notation. So maybe you remember that from high school or you are you see these numbers uh, in your college career. So uh, scientific notation is basically um, the way, Python's way of writing the following. Let's say we write 1.23 times 10 to the power of, let's say three, okay, this way. Uh, the language I'm using here in the Markdown cell is what is called the LaTeX um, language. Uh, it's not important here because this is a Python course, of course, but uh, to make it a little bit, uh, to look at, to make it look nice, uh, we use it here. So if you want to write a number like this, you can do so in Python as well, uh, using Python's scientific notation. And this simply goes like this. You write the significant digits, which is in this case, the 1.23. And now you want to multiply it by 10 to the power of three, and you do that by writing a lowercase e. I think it, an uppercase e also works, but the, the lowercase e is kind of a standard. You don't have a space here, so you simply write e, and then you write the exponent. Okay, so that is the shortcut version, and this will give you, in this case, 1,230. Okay, so sometimes you wanna use that, um, depending on the data you work with. Okay, so, other things uh, that are worthwhile to know about the floating point numbers. So um, let's call that so-called special values. So first and foremost, the floating point standard is um, standardized um, in the, um, by the organization called IEEE. So for basically every, all of engineering, there is an organization that standardizes things and the floating point standard is standardized there. So no matter which programming language you use, if you use uh, the programming language's floating point um, object or data type, then they will all behave no matter what uh, programming language you use. And the standard says that there are also so-called um, special values. So let's uh, see a couple um, of them. So we use the float constructor and as a text object, I give it some, the letters N-A-N. I can write that uh, either way in terms of lower and uppercasing. So let's write it like this. 
NaN, not a number. And if I execute that, I simply get back NaN, so not a number. So what, what kind of number is that? Well, if you basically, if you go ahead and uh, you divide by zero, um, you should get a um, zero division error, but sometimes um, some operations in such a situation will not give you a, an error message, but they will return to you an object that says, well, I don't know what this is, basically. So um, a, a value for which we don't know what the value is. And then this kind of what the float not a number object is. Okay, it's kind of sim uh, similar to the uh, built-in none uh, object that basically indicates the absence of a value, but float NaN is uh, basically the floating point version of that. Okay, so you must be careful in real life, and that is why I include that in this video. Um, in real life, if you load in data, let's say CSV or Excel-like data from uh, some file, and you load that using Python, then sometimes um, you can easily imagine that in an Excel file, some cells that usually that should uh, contain numbers, they are simply left empty. So for example, maybe you have a, um, a CSV file where you have different columns for different measurement things. And maybe for some observation, for some um, yeah, unit that we are trying to observe, there is no measurement for one, some variable. And then um, there are two ways that people do in real life. So some people, they put in a dummy value like zero or negative one to indicate, well, this uh, has no meaning, this cell. But other people are a little bit smarter and they just leave the cell empty. And an empty cell is of course better than putting in some dummy number uh, to mean nothing basically. Um, and in this case, um, when you leave a cell empty and you load it in into Python, then um, it turns out that oftentimes uh, the different Python uh, libraries you can use for doing that, they give you back the not, not a number um, object. And the thing is with the not a number object, it does not lead to any arithmetic errors if you, for example, add some number to it. So if I add, as we see here, the, the number one to the floating point number, not a number, then I simply get back not, not a number. Okay, if I add to something unknown, the number one, I don't know what I get back. And um, so what happens sometimes, and you have to be um, aware of that, if you load in data, and let's say CSV data, and the, you know that there are some empty cells in there, then don't just go ahead and use the value of the cell to do some arithmetic because you will never see any error message. The only thing you see at some point um, that you are getting back some meaningless results. And uh, that is of course a catcher that um, you um, just need to be aware of. Okay, so this happened to me um, in, in the early days when I did Python programming sometimes, and then usually what you need to do is you need to redo the entire analysis. Okay, so just be aware of that. Uh, two close relatives, but um, values that um, are less frequently used um, are probably the infinite, uh, the infinity value. And of course also, if we copy paste that, the negative infinity. So sometimes uh, this is uh, the positive infinity is useful if for some uh, variable you want to initialize it with a number that is sure to be greater than any other number you can use, um, you can do that. Okay, so um, if you go ahead and um, if you go ahead and for example, take any big number, let's take, oops, let's take this number here, almost a billion. And let's say if you want to compare that, let's say with smaller than to the floating point infinity number, then the answer is true. Okay, so this number here is greater than any other number, you know. Um, so this is a useful application of that, but as I said, the infinity values are usually a little bit less known. Just be aware of the not a number value. That is uh, a one big takeaway so, so that you don't run into some mistakes that you could easily avoid. Um, maybe um, let's look at one more thing regarding the not a number that I just comes to my mind. So if you go ahead and um, you compare not a number to itself, well, if you compare some number to itself, you should get back true because a number should usually have the same value. It should be equal in terms of its value to itself, right? But the not a number, a number is also not uh, doing that. Okay, so that is uh, that makes the not a number, not a number number a bit uh, hard to work with. Okay, so um, these are all the, this is how we create floating point numbers in different ways. And uh, these are some special values. But now let's talk about some uh, bigger uh, thing that it, you really, really need to understand. And it's not too hard. So let's call, let's call this section imprecision. So floating point numbers, they are what we call inherently imprecise. Okay, what do we mean by that? So let's do uh, an example. 
So if I add 0 0.1, okay, so 1 tenth plus 0 0.2, you all would expect this to be 0 0.3, okay, 3, 3 tenths. So let's compare that to 0 0.3. And now we would all, I guess, that this should be true, right? So let's run the cell and we get back false, okay? So is that a bug? And the answer is no, it's not. Um, any other language, R, MATLAB, and many, many more, they should give you the same result um, if you type this in their uh, respective syntax into, into an interpreter. Um, the reason being because the numbers are simply not precise, inherently imprecise, that's what they are. So there's nothing we can do about that, okay? So um, I will give you another example where you see that. So um, let's import the math module, okay? And let's use the square root function from the math module and let's take the square root of two. And now let's take the square root of two and um, raise it to the power of two, okay? So this should basically give you back two, the integer two. However, um, if you take a square root of a number, be it an integer or a float, doesn't matter, we will definitely get back a floating point number, okay? And if you raise a floating point number to the power of two, we will get also get back a floating point number. However, this number happens to be imprecise. So we get this uh, four here, which uh, I guess um, a beginner would not expect. Okay, so what is the consequence of that? The consequence of that is that when you work with numerical data and uh, you know a column or a row of data um, is, uh, consists of floating point objects, then you basically must not use the double equals the double equals operator here okay the double equals operator the comparison operator is basically taboo for that don't don't use it so let's say if you wanted to formulate um, this condition here or let's say if you wanted to formulate a condition that looks like this here so let's say double equals two and you want to do that correctly the, the solution to that is the following we are going ahead and we are going to define a threshold. And the threshold is, um, you know, the, it's the, the range within which you want to have some, some um, you know, um, equality, basically. So let's go ahead and define it to be as one times E to the power of, let's say, what is a typical precision? Let's say negative, uh, let's use simply negative 12, okay? And then what you do is you take uh, the left-hand side Okay, put that in parentheses. You subtract from that the right-hand side. Okay, so you have a difference of the left-hand side and the right-hand side. You put that in parentheses as well, and you use uh, Python's built-in apt function for the absolute value of that. So, I mean, the difference of the two sides could be negative, could be positive, but we don't really care about what the sign of the difference is. We only care about the magnitude of the difference. So that's why we use the apt function. And now what you get back is some number that usually is very small, like something to the power of times 10 to the power of 10 to the power of negative 17 here. So what you do then is you compare, is that strictly smaller than my threshold within which I am um, you know, ready to accept equality? And if so, then this is your comparison. Okay, so if I repeat that for the other example, let's go ahead and take the left-hand side of this, put it inside parentheses, subtract the right-hand side from that, put everything into parentheses, use the apps function, oops. Let's do that again. Push the for, uh, wrong keyboard here. So um, use the apps function and of course, uh, compare that to the threshold. And um, I forgot one parentheses, so let's put that back in. I did not. So where is it? So we have one that is here. So now we have a true. That means um, we know that these two sides, the left and the right hand side respectively are equal. Okay, so be aware of that. So um, yeah, it's kind of as a data scientist, you work with floating point numbers most of the time and you must not do any beginner's mistakes. Therefore, just be aware of that. And of course, many, um, many third party packages have um, built in methods or functions usually called something like almost equal and the al almost equal function does all of this logic here, the thresholding logic behind the scenes so that you don't have to uh, do this uh, comparison on your own, okay? So usually this works a bit, um, is a bit more easy. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and um, look into what is the problem here. So let's look into a little bit of an explanation for that. So um, 
let's call that um, floats in memory. So floats in memory, what do they look like? So I'm going to use a function, a built-in function called format, um, which um, gives me back a text representation of an object. Don't worry about that. It's not the big uh, point here. But let's go ahead and take the number 0 0.1. And uh, now the format function allows me to um, not only show 0 0.1 as the output, but to show me more digits, so to say, more decimals. So let's go ahead and use a special syntax, a formatting syntax, which you don't have to understand for now. Let's say, let's simply go ahead and um, give out 30 uh, digits to the right side of the decimal point. Let's do that. And what we see is that for the first, usually it's 14 to 15 digits, um, everything seems to be super precise. And then at some point, um, we lose the precision. Okay, so um, to do that with another example, let's do it. 0.2, we also get back that, okay? Um, now you may wonder, can I solve the problem if I round, okay? So let's say if I take one over three, one third, and let's say we want to go ahead and round this number. So this is obviously gonna give us back, let's use five digits. This is obviously gonna uh, give us back uh, zero point and then five threes. So what if um, I want to represent all the digits or more digits to the right hand side of this number. So let's also go ahead and do uh, 30 digits. This should be enough to see the problem. And also we see that uh, the rounding works, but only until 14, 15 digits, roughly speaking, on the right-hand side of the decimal point. So even with rounding, we cannot solve the problem here. And this problem is inherently unsolvable. Okay, so um, let's look at what is the big problem here. So in memory, let's say we create a floating point number, what happens is Python will simply create a standardized box. So the boxes that model floating point objects are always the same size and they are always have the same behavior attached to it. And let's call it X for now and let's reference that. And we have a couple of zero and ones in there. And this is of course in a way similar than the binary representation that I showed you in the previous video on integers. So why, why can we see here what the problem is? Well, the problem obviously is if let's say I go here and let's say I write one over three. So how do we usually write that? Well, usually how we write that is like this, 0 0.3333 and so on. And we could write it with a dot dot dot. And sometimes mathematicians simply go ahead and say, well, it's 0 0.3 and put a dash uh, on top of the three to indicate three forever, okay? Now, the problem with that is here we have obviously an infinite number of decimals. And that is true for many, many numbers called the real numbers. So the real numbers contain um, in, in particular um, many irrational numbers like numbers that are like pi or the, the number Euler's number E and other numbers, but also fractional numbers like one over three, one third, um, also have an infinite number of digits. So many, many numbers have this property. Now this box here that has all the ones and zeros that model um, the floating point number in a computer's object, uh, a memory, they are finite, okay? And we can make, of course, the floating point number, the floating point objects twice as big or three times as big and so on. And this is usually called double precision or quadruple precision. So you hear these terms sometimes, but no matter how big we make this floating point object here, at some point, um, our memory in the computer is limited. So no matter what we do, is using, the, using simply zeros and ones, it is very hard to come up um, with um, a precise, um, yeah, a precise representation. There are a couple of workarounds of that, um, in particular using the so-called decimal uh, data type uh, that Python also supports and also another one. But using the floating point data type, there is basically no way around and that is the inherent problem here, okay? So in this video, um, we are not going to go into detail of how the binary representation works. We did that a little bit for integers and I think it's really worthwhile to understand how this works in, in basics, in its basics, for, in its basics form. So um, use, understanding binary representations for integers, I think is a must for someone who wants to seriously become a data scientist. But for floats, um, for now, I think we can stop here with the CS theory part. And for now, I simply say and, and simply observe, well, this is finite, this is infinite, and there is no way in the world in theory that we can put something infinite into a finite space. This simply does not work, okay? And therefore, we, we are going to, to lose um, precision.
And um, so one nice thing I want to show you, there are a couple of numbers that are precise and these are all the numbers that are perfect um, powers of two. So if, for example, let's go ahead and copy paste um, this uh, formula here. So let's say if I replace the, the point two here with point two five, which is a quarter, so a quarter is two to the power of negative two, then uh, we have absolute precision. And why is that? Well, um, you can think that in a computer, as we saw in the previous video um, with the binary representation for integers, all that numbers, all that anything is in a computer is just ones and zeros. So turn the switch on or turn the switch off. So in other words, that is where the power of two comes from. But again, um, maybe I will do another video in the future where I explain the theory behind it. It's not too hard. Uh, I think for a practitioner, it's a bit too much. So um, I, I don't think uh, you really need that uh, for a floating point number, but you need at least to know the consequences of that. Because if you don't know the consequences of that, you will make errors when you do an, a data science analysis. And the um, the errors people usually make have to do with the imprecision and also with the special value. So these are the two things that you really, as a practitioner, should take out of uh, this video. Okay, so um, this is it um, for uh, this video. And uh, in the next couple of videos, we will finish off uh, the topic uh, to talk about numbers. We will in particular classify numbers. So I will see you in the next uh, videos.